Human rights are essentially a series of protections, a series of freedoms, a series of liberties that are owed to each and every one of us by virtue of our humanity. Now, what is the protection from? It was intended to constrain arbitrary state power. So we say that these rights are universal. But saying that they're universal, does that mean that all states must protect the rights in the exact same way? Not necessarily. And this is where we have the division between rights and content. So the right is freedom of expression. But how this plays out in New Zealand versus Canada will differ. So when we say there's universalism, when we say we've got universality, <laughs> we're saying that there's universality around rights, but not necessarily around content. Now there are some rights, as I said, that we regard, that we believe should be absolute. In New Zealand, do we take an absolute universalist approach towards the right to education, primary and secondary levels? So yes, it's required, it's mandatory, you have to be there. So the right is there, we have an absolute right, there's legislation in place that requires everybody to go to school, but then the content varies. Some of you have gone to higher decile schools, and some of you have gone to lower decile schools. Now, everyone has a right to an education, but we don't necessarily say anything about the quality of that education. Now, what I want you to take away from this sort of opening discussion is that we have this notion of human rights. And human rights is meant to, on one level, protect you from the arbitrary power of the state, to prevent the state from killing you, from torturing you, from abusing you. But then it's also meant to guarantee <coughs> minimum standards of living. What cultural relativists often argue is that rights are socially constructed. So we have the relativists that are saying that the rights will vary. So look how many people are in here. Imagine each one of you is a state and how you understand the right to education. Some of you are thinking your tertiary education should be fully funded. Others are thinking, hell no, it shouldn't be. There's variations in here, just like there are variations from state to state. And they take it a little bit further, and they say that ultimately, we have to be careful around absolute universalism, because there's an issue of sovereignty at play. So Australia may not like the way things are being done in New Zealand, but that doesn't matter, because New Zealand is a sovereign state. And New Zealanders decide from themselves how they're going to go about regulating their rights. But think about nations where you have a greater disparity of power. So take New Zealand and Fiji. Take England, France, Italy, and Libya. So look at when you have a kind of first world to third world relationship because often, an absolute representation of rights merely means a European representation of rights that is then enforced in the third world, often via bombings. Now thinking of this in terms of liberty and order. So with universalism, we see universalism being in the area of order. And on the other hand, we have the pure relativist who says, there is no such thing, there is no agreement whatsoever on any right. And what do they point to? Something as sacred, as sacrosanct, as the right to life. And see if people agree. Is abortion permissible? Is capital punishment permissible? Can you kill people in times of war? Now, what I'm saying to you is that the shift that you have 
is between notions of order and notions of sovereignty, notions of liberty. Female mammalian mutilation, also known as breast augmentation. Is this a practice that should be defended within the relativist or under the relativist banner? Or is this a practice that should be prohibited universally? Female genital mutilation. Now is this something that should be <laughs> universally prohibited? Or is this something that should be defended? And should these both be prohibited? Should both be defended? <laughs> should one be prohibited and the other defended? If so, which? Torture? Is torture something that should be universally prohibited? Is it something that should be culturally defended? And then the final one that I wanted to bring to you was humanitarian intervention. And I read this interesting quote. I'm an international legal scholar. This is the area that I work in. And I read, well, I follow regularly, the Harvard Journal of International Law. There's an interesting quote that I came across. And it says, listen to this. Individuals may be killed intentionally if their expected death is compensated by more than an equivalent expected increase in enjoyment of human rights. I would hope that people would listen to that and say, maybe killing people to promote human rights is not the best way. Since they're dead, kind of hard to protect their human rights anymore. 